the vets here, the government vets that need to sign off on Marley's documents for him to fly two days before his departure, they all have COVID. We are on a schedule because uh, Marley, we only have a few weeks left of our visas to enter Indonesia, which cost a couple of thousand dollars. Yeah. And so we only have weeks to get to Indo as it is, which then gives us only a couple of weeks to sail yeah, to 700 sail. miles. So hopefully we have a good weather window. We are already under the pump. Everything's yeah. against us. I'm Josh. That is the boss Benita. This is our newborn princess Tallulah, and here is our hound dog Marley. We've been living on our boat Nanji for five years now, but unfortunately, one of those years we have been stuck in a marina in Malaysia. After completing a second major refit, we've been trying our hardest to set sail back to our home country of Australia via Indonesia whilst we wait for the world to heal. We are a family of four and we want Marley to be able to return home with us, which is proving to be extremely difficult. Trying to import an animal into Australia in pre-COVID time was already a challenge in itself. To now have the extra hassles of needing to navigate movement restrictions, transport restrictions and the never-ending lockdowns in all countries involved has multiplied this task tenfold. Australian Customs are holding the blood samples, the labs to complete blood work are now backed up and then the courier companies are delayed. I've spoken directly to the Head of Quarantine and Imports in New Zealand about our circumstances and we are now waiting on their decision. Everything crossed, we can receive an extension on the current regulations due to the delays in this process which are simply out of our control. We can only hope that they see sense and allow us to continue with the export of our Mali man so we can return home for our families to meet their new grandchild. Having already attempted this process twice and failed, our patience and stress levels are all at breaking point. We are currently deep into our third attempt at preparing all the documents for his travel in the allocated 26 days. A process that used to be done in under 16 days, we now cannot complete within 26. Each failed attempt means we have to start from the beginning, meaning another month of not sailing and another month of being stuck in lockdown in Malaysia. It just keeps coming. So Indonesia have uh, just made an announcement that very soon you won't be able to enter the country from overseas if you are not fully vaccinated and you need to show proof that you are vaccinated. So Yosh and I are not vaccinated, but we still think that we can make the cutoff date. So if we don't make it in time for this visa, we won't be able to apply for a new visa unless we are vaccinated. So this is like our only chance. The COVID there is spreading really quickly. I can't see them revoking this new condition of entry anytime soon. So if we don't go there now, if we don't get in on this visa, I don't think we're going to be leaving anytime soon. Like I'm thinking six months plus or more because the vaccine is rolling out here, um, but they're only up to like the 65 year olds at the moment. So we still, we're like, we're way at the bottom of the list. Like we're in the dredges. So if we don't go now, we're going to be sitting here for who knows how long. Okay, so we think that we have Miley's situation sorted out. He is um, going to be exceeding the 26 day limit, but they said that once his um, lab results come through, we can um, ship him after that. And then um, that's if he gets a negative test, which I'm sure he will. And then once he gets to New Zealand, he'll just have to redo that test. So he'll have to spend um, a bit more time in quarantine. So he'll be in quarantine for three weeks, which to me is far better than leaving him behind in another country. So it is, it does suck for him, but it's the best that we can do. And at least he's coming home. So that's, that's, pretty much sorted. At the moment we only have three weeks to get from here to Padang and it is a 10 day sail so we pretty much could make it. We'd need to leave now so that we have enough time to accommodate for bad weather. You know we are sailing with Tallulah so we don't want to be punching into anything or doing you know um, we just want to be cruising. We need someone else to help us out because we don't know how long this lab is going to take to do Marley's blood work. They haven't even got it yet. And so it could take them a week. And so if we stay here and wait for that week, then we only have two weeks to do that 10 day sail. And we really will be pushed for time because we still have to wait for the right weather window to get around the top of Padang. 
So I'm just like, let's just push on forwards. Josh has gone around to our neighbor, Fred, um, who loves Marley and he's offered to help us out. So um, to see if he would be able to take him to the agent who will export him. If that happens, then we can hopefully leave in the next few days. I'm just gonna punch on forwards and go and do the provisioning and make sure that's done. Just get everything ready to leave. This is our last chance of getting out of Malaysia. We need all of this to work so that we can leave otherwise we like we'll just be stuck here like uh, <sighs> yeah hey Lula we're in a bit of a pickle aren't we girl we're trying to play by all the rules and jump through all the red tape and <sighs> trying to get home aren't we girl Yeah, so I just had a chat with Fred, we sat down, just went over everything and just the delays in Mali's departure with the lab results and the need for us to get to Indonesia for our visa. As long as I have it all sorted, which I will have everything sorted before we do go anywhere and out of reception, but so Fred is happy to take care of Mali for the week to then take him up to Penang to be put, to give into the agent to jump on his flight. So we're just waiting on the lab report results out of Australia, yeah. um, which is holding everything up. Australia and UK, they're the ones, that's the problems right now. Australia and UK, surprise, surprise. <laughs> oh my God. So, um, but yeah, so however long it takes to get the lab results out of them, New Zealand are sweet, everything is sweet on the side of New Zealand and New so he can arrive into the country, which is one big win for today that I've been super nervous about. Yeah. But yeah, so now it's just a matter of sorting us and sorting the Malaysian side and making sure Mali's cared for. But Fred, Fred will probably struggle to take him up to the plane on time. He might accidentally. <laughs> he loves him, eh? He loves Mali so much. <laughs> yeah, so Mali missed that flight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, but so I, all right, I need to call the lab now, the UK lab, because it's 3 p.m. and they'll just be starting work for the day over there since we are in front of their time. So we'll go... And ask for the tracking number so we can Ask for some tracking information to so I can at least track down what's going on with the sample in Australian customs because it seems that no one else really gives to. All right. <sighs> okay. One step forward. As we're preparing to leave, just I'm starting to suss these weather forecasts because this whole passage about for us leaving Malaysia going around the top of Sumatra and down to Padang where we plan to clear into Indonesia on the west coast of Sumatra the whole passage is based around safely getting around the top tip of Sumatra uh, because it is the wrong season in the northern hemisphere there it's the southwest monsoon and so the southwest winds just howl around the top there 20-30 knots every day smack bang on the nose and so it's all about arriving at the top of Sumatra, which is about 250 odd miles away from here. It's all about arriving there when it's calm, so you can just do the 30 miles to get around the top of Sumatra, because when you get 40 odd miles south of the tip on the west coast of Sumatra, you get into the variable winds once again, and you're out of that monsoonal breeze. And because the west coast of Sumatra kind of has its own little weather system, so you get a lot more calm winds so we're expecting to either have unicorn fired up with the light northwesterlies or we'll be motoring down that once we're 50 miles south of the tip of Sumatra there. But we need to make it so we can, even if we're motoring around the top of Sumatra because sailing upwind in 30 knots is not the ideal situation. It's quite heavy waters around the top of Sumatra because there's one, there's the winds, and then there's the other factor of the currents that rip between the islands and the cuts that you need to try to get past. So you need to time it with wind, uh, with the current, you need to time it with the wind. So, and if you get wind against current, you're gonna get some big ass standing waves, which we don't want. So we wanna have a calm wind. Neap tides would be ideal, but it's just as long as there's no wind to make those standing waves, because we wanna be running with the tide so we can get through those cuts, which is going to be against the grain of the wind. So it's just the whole passage is planning to get around that 50 miles, 30 to 50 miles around the top of Sumatra. That's the most difficult bit about this whole passage. So I'm just trying to figure out a time when we can leave now 
and today, like the week-long forecast shows roughly in a week's time, there's a little window for 24 hours, 36 hours of when we could get around the top there. But it is a long-range forecast. That's a good seven or eight days out from now. And, uh, and just looking at Predict Wind and what they're saying for the lead up to that, one model's basically saying it's 30 plus knots for the week leading up to that. So even if it is calm for that couple of days to get around the top, the ocean's going to be messy as because it's been blowing 30 plus knots. And you also have to remember going around the top of Sumatra, it's the whole Indian Ocean that's pushing up against that area of land. So the currents rip, just the whole ocean, you know, it's open ocean smacking straight back in, into that area. So it's pretty, it's a pretty treacherous patch of water, which, and that's just what all this planning is about, is getting around that. You still have to do the 250 miles across the Malacca Strait, dodging ships to reach this point. Uh, but the wind through there, we've had southerlies from here weeks on end, so we should have like 10 to 15 knot maximum southerlies plus the squalls through the night. But that passage is probably the easier side of things. It'll be a nice little warm up for us to get into it and doing the overnighters with Tallulah. And we just need to make sure we get that calm weather around the top of Sumatra. We'd like to go up to Langkawi from here, which is 120 miles north, which is an easy sail because we're in the protection of Sumatra and the Malacca Straits here. So it'd be nice to do our first little overnighter with Tallulah that way. In Malaysia, you need to clear port to port. And currently in Malaysia, the pandemic is hectic. To clear out is quite the process. The harbour master, they're all working from home. And, and to travel interstate, you need to get police clearance. But to travel interstate, we then need to have a marina berth in Talaga that will then accept us because yachts are only allowed in Malaysia currently if you're sponsored by a marina. So here we're tied up with Pankul Marina. And then to go to Langkawi, we have the marina there where we need to get a letter. So we need to make a booking, get a letter from uh, the marina master, who we then take that letter to police here in Pankor to get police clearance. The police clearance we then take to the harbour master. Because they're working from home, it'll take them 24 to 48 hours to clear this. So we need to wait for that to occur, which we can then go into the customs and immigration offices to clear out just to go to Langkawi. So that's a two day, three day process in clearing out. And we're still in Malaysia. And then we still have to go through that process in Langkawi to clear out of the country. Previously, pre-COVID, we could have checked out today, sailed up to Langkawi and be there tomorrow, do what we need to do, and then Harold Holt again on Thursday, Friday, and be sitting over at Sumatra waiting for this weather window for the Tuesday to get around the top of Sumatra. But because now it's a two to three day process of clearing port to port inside Malaysia, we can't just willy nilly go sail up to Langkawi. That's what we're up against. But honestly, with the amount of bureaucracy and man-made problems that we've had to deal with up to this point and just trying to leave, I'll take the sea and the weather over that any day. The passage making is probably the easiest part about this whole scenario, this whole ordeal. So I think once we just check out of here and get going, everything will feel easier and a lot of weight will be lifted off our shoulders because it's just really weighing down on us. At every angle we're told no and we can't do anything. So we're just trying our hardest to get everything done and do what we can to get on out of Malaysia and begin this journey. If we don't reach Indonesia, by this visa, we won't be able to get another visa because you need to have a vaccination card, which we don't have, and we won't be able to get a vaccine here in Malaysia until next year at the earliest. So, like, we, we can't run on that. We, we're young, we're outside of the brackets. Old people here in the marina have been getting a vaccine, so they can travel, but we can't get it. So um, we need to run without it, and we just... There's lots of what ifs still that could occur but like i said i think we just got to get on the go because we can't sit here stuck and being told no for another year which is what it's looking like it could be because we can't leave like we just need to go get going and let things fall into place and we can deal with it when we're on the water Get the boat ready. We're out of here.
First day's the day. <laughs> Iridium test. Did you get a message? Iridium. Did you get a message from me? Iridium code. Yeah, did you get a message? Uh, No, there's no Iridium code. Alright, I'll try again. Sorry to interrupt you. You're up. Alright, see ya. See ya. That's so good. So, we just got an email from the UK lab about the test results for Mali and about clearing them out of customs in Australia. And they have been cleared out of customs in Australia. Finally, the lab in Australia have them, fast tracking all the results, and everyone is very aware they have said of the required dates because both myself and the vet here in Malaysia have been very insistent about getting these results ASAP. So that is yeah. the best email we could have had. We might still right be here leave. even. Very much. We could have the results within the next day or two when we're here so everything will be finalised before we go to sea, yeah. which is the dream case scenario, yeah. which is exactly what we want. Awesome. <laughs> Things just told you we just had to get ready to go and everything will fall into place. We just got to go. Okay. Yeah. Hit it. Hit it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Baby. I heard that you wanted to stay. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's go sailing, girl. I'm strapping you in. Oh, is he dummy? You can find another shelter you can call your own You can't push time You can't push time But you can ride out every wave like an alibi Your past won't leave Your past won't leave It'll stay with them like it stays with me This is emotional It really is a bit of a bittersweet Been working so much to get out of here and I'm so stoked to be moving but like it is it's actually a little bit emotional leaving somewhere where you've been there for such a long time, so get to know people a bit more. Um, I know everything's sorted. We're going to see Mali and Aussie, and that's what all of this is about. All this organisation, all of these man-made problems for the last couple of months to get Mali safely on his journey. It's it's all worth it, and we've been stuck with this extra time, but it's all worth it now. We're on the go. We know he's going to get back home, and that's the most important thing. I already missed the little bastard. <laughs> yeah. But we know he's safe and we know he's happy and we know he's getting back to us in our home country. So let's just begin this journey, eh? Let's keep positive. We've got miles to travel, we've got hell times ahead of us. Let's just. Just went back sailing, man. So. Yeah. Keep the froth, man. Woo! We're not actually traveling very far today. We just had to get out of the marina. You know, that's like the first step that makes it feel like the journey is going. But we've just gone around to the top of Pankor Island. Uh, it's been blown southerly. We're expecting a southerly tomorrow. So we'll get up super early tomorrow and we'll just uh, do the overnighter, the 130 odd miles up to Langkawi from here. Um, so we're just gonna drop anchor in here. When we first came down to the boatyard, we sailed into this anchorage where we're going at night time. Um, and the charts here say that it's 3.3 low, but then like this big bay is just all like 1.1 meter. And already 
we're way past the anchorage where we uh, where we dropped the pick last time, and the depth has leveled out to four meters. Because <laughs> last time we didn't have a depth gauge when we came in, and uh, this time we do, and it is life changing. <laughs> so we anchored like way out in the back here last time, where it was super exposed. Uh, whereas now we got a depth sounder, so we'll just keep creeping. Just keep creeping on in, keep on creeping. <laughs> it's... Oh man, we're already like a couple of hundred meters in from where we were last time. Crazy. Now the anchor's down, we've still got a couple of little tasks to get ready to go sailing tomorrow because we are heading offshore to a degree, even though it is protected waters, we're still heading offshore and uh, you know you can get real short steep choppy waves in the Malacca Strait here wind against current sort of stuff and so we don't travel long distances with flubber lifted up on the back here so we're going to put flubber up on the bow as if we're going properly offshore put the outboard lifted up with the outboard hoist one of the little upgrades we made to Nanji while we were on the hard stand so yeah I just can't see if it's all about trying to do stuff myself, you know, make life a little bit easier because we have another one to think about. The end of the world at the palm of my We sailed of that 3,000. About uh, one nautical mile. <laughs> Three. One down, 2,999 to go. Are you ready, girl? You strap in. If you like these little singlets, I'll put a link in the description to the uh, Amazon link in the description to them so you can get some for your little girl too. Thank you. 